interesting and inspiring to hear about other people's business and entrepreneurial journeys. And Nick and I are very lucky that we have a life that we love, we feel passionate about, we can really operate from anywhere in the world. And the same can be said of my guest here today in Hastings. It's Will Thompson, who is an author and an ocean advocate. And Will, um, we've been on one of your tide walks today, which is where you educate people about um, the tides and the currents. And very very interesting but you're you very much subscribe to uh, multiple streams of income you have lots of different uh, ways that you generate cash flow don't you yeah i actually organize my working week <laughs> so i do um, mondays is my marketing day Tuesdays and Wednesdays is when I write for publications. Mm -hmm. So I write for Coast Magazine um, and I'm also, well, I was, I've d done a proposal for a children's book series, so I'm waiting on the publishers for that. Mm -hmm. So I do those, all my writing and illustrations on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. And then on Thursdays and Fridays, I'm just starting doing some filming with, um, with, with a couple of other young guys. We're going to be um, doing tide tutorials and we'll be charging a subscription, a monthly subscription. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're going to be providing a lot of free content, but then if people actually want to learn, um, we're putting a lot of time and energy into trying to make models and demonstrations, and so they'll do a £2 subscription, and then we can... The idea is that we can appeal to... So our market is swimmers, sailors, surfers, um, paddleboarders who want to know more about what the natural world's doing. So with my tide walks specific, you've got to be they've got to be there at that place. Whereas with the videos, we're hoping it can be anyone in the world. There can be someone in South Australia, someone in Canada, but they've got the same interests. It's the same processes that are affecting them. Mm -hmm. So I'm quite excited about seeing how that's going to turn out. Oh, that, that, that's fantastic. And you absolutely love the ocean. You're fascinated by tides and you, you have managed to make a, a business out of it. And um, I guess, uh, you know, having two books published, which Will has had um, the Book of Tides and World of Tides published, they're almost like a, a launch pad, aren't they, for the other projects that you're doing? Yeah, definitely. Um, so it's interesting talking about working working remotely so it really started i went off in my van where i worked i was making tide maps showing the cycle of currents along the coast and the telegraph did a big feature called uh, digital nomad the world is my office and then my agent actually read it and he emailed me the next day saying do you want to write a book about the tides so he said yeah and then from that um yeah it's definitely it also gave me an opportunity to l spend more time learning it. Mm -hmm. So the publishers gave me an advance for two years to write the books. Mm -hmm. So I'd never have otherwise had that time to be able to go out and to learn and to visit some of the places around the world with really big tides or waves or something special going on. Mm -hmm. And then from that, yeah, it's moved on to more engagement with people. Mm -hmm. So doing my events and, and actually interacting with the people who are using that knowledge. I think a book is a very, very good example of, of a passive income generator because you only write it once, yeah. but then it generates income in perpetuity. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the way... I don't know the details of the publishing industry, but they give you your advance and then you've got to sell a certain amount of copies and then you get £2 per, per, per book left. Um, yeah, so it's, it's interesting and I try and do that actually with most of my products. So with my designs of my tide maps and things, you do that design once or if it's, even if it's a print, you do that design once and then it's on your shop and then you sell 100,000, however many, but the time is actually in designing it or making it. Yes. And then as long as you keep... The interesting thing is you've got to produce new content to keep people engaged mm -hmm and that sells your old content as well. Yes. So people will stop buying my book if I wasn't doing tide walks. So you've got to be able to keep doing new things and that brings them back to the book and it all helps each other. Absolutely, and I think to say that you are a published author, um, that's a platform for maybe that helps you get your column in Coast, yeah, maybe definitely. it will get you some TV work. It really does give a lot of credibility to be a published author. And, you know, whatever business you're in, if you can write a book about it, it really yeah. demonstrates your domain expertise, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. When I'm emailing people, if you say, well, actually, no, when I meet someone and they say, what do you do? If I say I'm an author, they're always impressed. Whereas if I say oh, I teach people about tides, they never quite know. So it, it, 
it gives them something to pin by. They know you've been successful if you've published it. If somebody else has paid for you to publish it, it shows that, that it's been successful. Um, and it shows that you're, yeah, it just gives them, shows you know what you're doing and you, and you know what you're talking about. I think what's very interesting about what you're doing as well, Will, is that it's so niche. You have got a very specific niche and you're working to dominate it. And I think that's a very, very, um, you know, savvy business strategy for anybody, no matter what business they're in. Yeah, there was um, a few years ago, we, my partner Naomi and I used to listen to this guy, Alan Watts, and he said... One of them really rang true is you become a master of whatever you're doing and then people will pay you a lot of money for it because you know exactly what you're doing. So I've sort of taken that concept. But it has been really difficult because you're making a living out of something that's not a job that nobody ever said was a job. <laughs> so you're creating... It's quite bizarre because there's nothing there. You're having to create work for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing is, from my point of view, it's... People don't know, if I didn't put it there, they wouldn't know that they needed it. Mm -hmm. So it's to make them realise this is, you actually need this and I'm the one who's going to give it to you um, and then this is how you can, you know, and then you monetize it through all your different things. Mm -hmm. So it's creating a market where there isn't one and then making it a necessity mm -hmm. for people to buy it. Mm -hmm. I, li I like that thought process. Yes, yeah. I do. <laughs> and I think ultimately... Um, it's going to enable you uh, as you build these income streams and all the different things that you're doing your tide walks your events your writing your columns you know your commentary it's all building up for you to actually do something that is you know your, your absolute dream would you like to tell us a little bit about what that is well the dream at the moment um, is we will see if the kids like it <laughs> <laughs> it may turn into a nightmare um, so we're planning on building a catamaran um, to go on a big sailing trip so my ultimate dream is to do a circumnavigation so sail all around the world mm -hmm. but with two young kids I don't want to say right we're off for five or six years and then you know three months later everyone hates it so we're going to do a year at a time and take it step at a time and give ourselves an exit at the end of each year but the, uh, the dream is if, if it all goes well to, to, to do a circumnavigation so using the winds and the currents to take us around the world in, in a boat that will be powered completely by renewables so there will be electric engines, it will all be solar and wind powered so we won't use any carbon um, and we're going to be I've developed something called a, well it's my super strategy and they're superheroes, S-U-P-A. So the idea for a sustainable future is, um, it's almost like a triangle or sort of, um, so you've got three elements coming together. So you've got people understanding what's happening with the natural world. Mm -hmm. So understanding how we're affecting it. There's something called ocean acidification. Mm -hmm. So the ocean absorbs the carbon dioxide and it makes it more acidic and it's affecting shellfish and organisms. But we don't exactly know what the effects are. Mm -hmm. So there are people out there specialising in that thing. Um, and then there's also people preventing unnecessary damage. So developing renewable energies or mm -hmm. ways of storing the energy which is the big thing at the moment, and then people adapting to it. So the climate is changing, you're not going to stop that. It, you, even without humans, there would be climate change. It's a natural process of the world. But you have to change the way our communities are mm -hmm. because Hastings as it is now, you know, it, it needs to be adapted to 20 or 30 years, 50 years time mm -hmm. when you're going to be getting more extreme weather and higher sea levels. Mm -hmm. So within the people understanding, preventing and adapting, mm -hmm. you've got this really strong platform for developing a sustainable future. Mm -hmm. So the plan for our trip is to go on our trip around the world using the natural powers and um, and meeting the people who are doing it. And then we'll be filming it and doing a podcast and also trying to be positive about it. And there is a feeling, there's a sort of a sense of panic. Um, so, But it's trying to show there are people out there doing stuff. We can adapt to it um, and we can live positively and have a good future. Wow. Well, I have to say, Will, 
I, I take my hat off to you. I think that is such a wonderful vision to have, and it's it's a very big vision. But you know, you might as well think big, and um, you know, everything you're doing is working towards that. And you know, the icing really, or the the cherry on on the icing on the cake, is not only will you do something that you love, that's very uh, educational for people on a very very important issue, but the way your life is set up, you can carry on. Uh, working from your boat, um, doing all your writing and authoring and all your consulting work and you, you can just be have a mobile life while you're still living your dream and I think that's such a wonderful and inspirational thing to do. Yeah, I mean it came, comes from the van as well because when I first thought of going on our trip around Britain I was like, how is that going to work? And then step by step we were like, well, we can get mobile Wi-Fi mm -hmm. and then we can we can get electricity mm -hmm. so we created in our van a, a, a space where it would work because before that um, I hadn't seen any examples and now loads of people have got vans and stuff I'm not saying I came up with it but it was interesting that each step made it happen and then just taking that same concept with the boat yeah. um, but just doing it on a bigger scale mm -hmm. And, and taking your family and your, your children with you, it's, it's wonderful. Very, very inspirational stuff, Will. I want to wish you all the best with everything that you're doing. If people want to find about, out more about the work you're doing, where can they find it online? Uh, my website, Tidal Compass. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm actually just starting a new hashtag, Seize the Power, okay. which is fun. So I'm getting... I'm trying to encourage people to, to share their adventures mm -hmm. um, and with the hashtag seize the power, but explaining how either they harness the ocean's energy or they got caught out. Mm -hmm. So I'm leading it with interviews with sort of role models, mm -hmm. so big wave surfers or offshore sailors or um, long distance swimmers. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to hopefully create a little community on Instagram of mm -hmm. people all around the world, hashtag seize the power. Um, and I'll be running the interviews from my page uh, at Tidal Compass mm -hmm. and the website is Tidal Compass. Fantastic. So as we close out here, Will, if you could give one tip to somebody that wanted to break away from the nine to five, who wanted to create a better life for themselves and their family, um, you know, what would what would your advice be? Uh, <laughs> I was thinking about it. Um, you've got to be able to, you've got to be able to deal with the highs and the lows. Yeah. Um, because it is tough. Um, it's feast and famine, isn't it? it so you, so you've got to be able to put up with making sacrifices. Yeah. But the rewards, when they pay off, are so worth it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you just got to stick at it. And well, what I do is, I almost work it like a boat. So you've got these compartments. So you've got to be so efficient with your time, because that's the only thing you've got really when you're when you're small scale and you're an entrepreneur. So everything I'm working on is actually benefiting all the other things. Mm -hmm. So when I write my coast feature, that's also benefiting my tide walks. Yeah. So it's it's getting things right at the beginning mm -hmm. and then just sticking with your, it's plan your work and work your plan mm -hmm. um, and putting up with the hardships. Yeah. Oh, well, and, yeah. and not getting too cocky when you do well, because <laughs> it doesn't last. Oh. No, it does. It's nice, it's all growth, isn't it? It is. Well, I have to say, again, um, all the best for everything you're doing, Will. You, uh, Nick and I, we found it so inspirational meeting you today, hearing your plans for the future, um, and you know how you're making this life for yourself and your family. I think it's a wonderful inspiration, and I do encourage everybody to go and look at Will's website and maybe come on one of his tide walks, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> so much to learn, and uh, just meeting people like Will can inspire people to move forward. So. Um, as I say, all the best for the future.